Hi, welcome everybody to this talk trade session. My name is Jose Escriba. I'm developer in Red Studio RTL team and I would like to introduce you some new features that we have added in Red Studio Seattle for the Bluetooth low energy stuff. We will focus on the advertising management with the new advertise data class and how to turn our devices into beacons with the new beacon device component. This is the roadmap for this session. First of all, we will see a brief explanation on how Bluetooth Low Energy Advertising works. And then, I'll explain how we can use the new features in the Bluetooth framework to get data from the advertisement. As an example, we will have a couple of demos which will deal with two actual devices that provide information through the advertising packages. These are the Blue Maestro Tempo Sensor and the EM Microelectronics Beacon with, with an accelerometer. Next, I'll show you how you can create your custom advertisement using a GAT server in Android. By the way, uh, GAT server support is also a new feature in Red Studio Shadow. And at the end, uh, we will see how to convert our devices into beacons, simply dropping the beacon device component in our application. Okay, uh, we have a lot of work, so here we go. Let's start by taking a look at how Bluetooth Low Energy Technology works, and in particular the way these devices broadcast advertised data. In Bluetooth LE ecosystem, we will find two well-differentiated roles, considering the way the devices operate. That approach is very similar to the traditional Korean server architecture. On one hand, we have the peripheral devices. These devices will be those that act as servers, providing services to which other Bluetooth LE devices can connect to get information. On the other side, we find the central devices. They will be those devices that use the information provided by peripheral devices. The interaction between peripheral and central works as follows. A peripheral indicates its presence by broadcasting advertising packets. These advertising packets generally contain some inf useful information to identify the peripheral, such as the peripheral's name and or the identifiers of the services that it provides. On the other hand, a central device can scan for these advertising packets and discover nearby peripherals. Once a central has discovered a peripheral in which it's interested, this can request a connection and start to get or interchange data with the peripheral. Once the connection is established, the information interchange is managed by the generic attribute profile on the Bluetooth LE stack using the attribute protocol. But this is not the purpose of this session. Today, we will stop a little earlier, just in the advertising process. Let's study a little the anatomy of Bluetooth LE packets. Bluetooth LE link layer has only one packet format, used for both advertising channel packets and data channel packets. A Bluetooth LE advertising packet has the format described above. The Access address field shall be always this particular 4 bytes, and the protocol data unit field is divided into three fields a header, a MAC address, and a data subfield. The first four bits of the header are the protocol data unit type that defines how kind of peripheral is advertising considering its connectable capacity. This table shows the possible values and what they mean. Connectable and directed and non-connectable and directed are the more usual advertised packets that we will find. The first one indicates that a central can request more information from the peripheral that is advertising just by sending a scan request to it. This will not suppose a connection establishment but the peripheral 
could send more information to the central through the advertised channel. In an advertised scan response packet that has the same format. Non connectable and directed is the type used when the peripheral does not accept connections, which is typical in beacons, for example. This could be a chronogram of the advertised process. The peripheral broadcasts advertised data packets in a regular manner. If a central device is actively scanning, it could request a scan response to this peripheral and get more data over the advertised channel. But what kind of information we get on the advertised data and scan response data packets? Well, returning to the advertised data, we can see that it contains an up to 31 bytes data field. Yes, that's not a lot of space, but we will have to make do with it. The data field is divided into advertised data sections. Each of the advertised data sections comprises a byte indicating its length, another byte indicating the type of information it contains, and the rest of bytes are the actual information. The different data types that we can find are listed here. The most relevant will be from 2 to 7 that are used to advertise the services that the peripheral provides, 8 and 9 that are used to specify the device name, or the double F use it as a free manufacturer specific data field where anyone can define his custom payload data. Okay, but if we can interchange data with Bluetooth LE devices through the CAD profile, why do we need all this? Well, it depends on what kind of information the device needs to suppose it will be more suitable use the CAD profile or the advertised data. Here we have a couple of pros for the use of advertised data. For instance, we can get simpler, cheaper and less power consuming devices that don't need to implement the full Bluetooth LE stack since they only use the advertised data to share information. Furthermore, this information can be read by several devices simultaneously, whereas a GAT profile connection restricts the data consumption only to the connected device. In the other hand, as cons, the amount of information that can be transmitted is very small, just 31 bytes in the advertised packet and 31 more in the scan response. And this is an unidirectional communication only. Besides this, the information is broadcasted, so any scanning device can read it. Well, how can we catch the advertisement using Rad Studio? Ok, both the T-Bluetooth LE component and the T-Bluetooth LE manager of the framework offer us the Undiscover LE device event. This event is fired each time an advertisement arrives during the scanning process. In this event, we get an object representing the Bluetooth LE device that generates the advertisement, its RSSI and a T-scan response object. This object is a dictionary of key values pairs where keys are the different types of advertised data sections and values are arrays of bytes with the actual data. Since we could have different T-scan response objects every time we get an advertisement from a device, for instance, one for the advertised data and another for the scan response, we have implemented a new property for the Bluetooth LE device object, where we are going to gathering all the information that arrives in different advertised events, and that allows us to recover that information in an easier way. Now, the Bluetooth LE device has a new property called Scanned Advertised Data, where all the device advertisement will be collected. This property 
is an object of the new tbluetoothly advertised data which provides several functions and properties to get the main section information in a convenient and simple way. To illustrate how advertised data is managed with our framework, I have prepared a demo that interacts with two actual devices that shares information through the advertised data. One device is the Blue Maestro Tempo Sensor. This device broadcasts the environment temperature, humidity and pressure over the advertised data through the manufacturer-specific data field. In this table, we can see how we have to parse the manufacturer-specific data to get these values. The other device is the EM Microelectronics EMBC02 model that is a beacon device with accelerometer. This device has three operation modes. In moving on four modes, it broadcasts beacon proximity information when it detects movement or when it is falling. But in central mode, this device broadcasts its acceleration through that vendor has called a sensor packet. This packet is just an advertised packet with two advertised sections, one for the device name and another for the manufacturer specific data, where it provides the acceleration data and some more information as you can see in the packet diagram. Let's see how it works in the following demo. Ok, here we have an application where we have dropped a Bluetooth LE component and set its enable property to true. This button will start a discovery process with a high timeout for 10 minutes and this other button will help us to stop the discovery process. We have defined an event handler for the discover LE device for the discover LE device event uh, and here we are going to display in the memo the entries for the scan response dictionary. Ok, I have launched the application in my Android device. Remember that you need to set the Bluetooth permissions in your project to run on Android. And let's see what we get in the scanning process. As you can see, there are a lot of Bluetooth devices advertising over here. We are working hard with this technology and this is a little Bluetooth jungle. There are a lot of beacons and other devices, but let's look for the tempo sensor. Okay. Tempo here. Okay. Here we have an advertisement of the tempo sensor. As you can see, it's advertising several sections but this is which uh, we are interested in the manufacturer specific data section okay other interesting section will be the services that it is advertising here in the complete list uh, 60 bits UUID we can see that the device is advertising 18OA service and we can use this to filter or scan process. Here in the discovery devices method we can provide an array as a second parameter indicating that we are only interested in the devices advertising these services. We use this helper class to create a Bluetooth UUID the service we are interested in is the 18OA and the next time we start the discover process only the devices that are advertising this service will be found let's see Okay, 
press the scan button and as you can see now the only device that it's reporting uh, the application is the tempo sensor because it's the only device over here that is advertising this service okay now let's see how we can parse the information from the manufacturer data to obtain the sensor values i have created a helper record to parse the manufacturer specific data this one this record will store the bytes provided in the manufacturer data and help us to extract the sensor values following the specifications of the device vendor for example, the specification indicates that the humidity value is represented in the ninth byte of the manufacturer specific data. So we just return it. Okay? The bytes 5 and 6 represents the temperature value in Celsius multiplied per 10. So we use this code to retard the value as a single. Okay. Okay. Let's change the discover LE event. Yeah. We are going to comment this code. And now we will use the scan to advertise data property of the device to get the manufacturer data. With this we create the helper record and then we can use it to retrieve the sensor values in an easy manner. Okay, using the device scanned advertised data, the manufacturer specific data, we are going to create a helper record. And then we can display in the memo the values from this record. For example, temperature instant temperature and the humidity mm. humidity and also the pressure Okay, so let's see how it works. Okay, press the scan button again. <coughs> and 
and then we can display in the demo these values for example the temperature Also, the humidity. <laughs> and also the pressure. Okay, let's see how it looks. Okay, press the scan button again. And now you can see how we are getting the values in a regular manner every time that the uh, component detects an advertisement the reporting the temperature the humidity and the pressure in the manufacturer that it data and we are passing it in a easy manner okay let's stop it Okay, we are going the same, similar, similar thing with the EM microcontroller beacon. I have created also a helper record to get the acceleration uh, value from the manufacturer data. Okay, uh, in the specification of the EM beacon, we can see how to get this value. Uh, it is represented. Uh, between the byte 2 and 3 uh, and is in uh, fixed point format so let's do a similar thing here I will define a bar of this record type But uh, here we have to take into account that uh, the beacon is not advertising any service. So if we are filtering for this service, we didn't, uh, we, we don't have, have to to find this device. So remove the filter, and now here we can filter, for example for the uh, device name. The device name is AM Beacon 03898 but then we can do something like this filtering for the beginning of the device name Now we are interested in the acceleration that 
is provided in the record. This is the em backcon acceleration. Remove all this. Okay, and let's see. Okay, scan. And here we have the events, the advertising events from the beacon. The beacon now is uh, it's not moving, but if I move the beacon, I am moving the beacon, we get a uh, different acceleration values, as you can see. Okay, that's all for the advertising uh, gathering on Bluetooth. Let's see now how we can create our custom advertisement. Rada Studio provides get server support for iOS and Mac since X7. And now, with Red Studio Seattle, we support also get server in Android. It required an Android version 5.0 or Raider, and this is also chipset dependent. Here you can see some compatible chipsets and devices that support this feature. Now, when we create a get server, we also can customize its advertised data. In the same way that we have an advertised data in the Bluetooth LE device, we also have a property in the tBluetooth get server class, the advertised data property, that allow us to customize what our get server is advertising. There are some restrictions here because Mac and iOS only allows to customize the services UUIDs and the local name for the GAT server. All the other fields are ignored for Mac and iOS. On the other hand, Android allows to specify other fields as service data and manufacturer specific data, but it will always advertise the Bluetooth device name as the GAT server's local name. Regardless what we specify in the local name property of the advertised data. Although we can use a workaround as I will show you in the next demo. Let's see how we can create our custom advertisement in Android and catch it from iOS and Mac. Here I have created a new application with Bluetooth Tele component on the form create event I'm getting the uh, get server into the f get server field that is a private field for the form and at the button press this button advertise I'm customizing the advertise data for this get server a good way of provide a lot of information with little space is to provide an uh, URL. In addition, I use the Google URL shortener service to get very short URL. These are the URLs that I'm going to advertise. What I'm going to do here is to advertise URLs through two different advertise data sections. I'm going to advertise one URL through the service data with this line. Binding this URL to 1800 uh, service UUID and another URL through the manufacturer specific data. 
what I'm doing here is to encode the uh, string into bytes that is what we have into all these fields the manufacturer specific data it's a the batch field and all the entries in service data uh, uh, have a pair of a uh, Bluetooth UUID with the uh, bytes. I'm also adding the service 1800 to the advertised data so when I will scan uh, I can filter for this service okay. and here as I have mentioned before Android always will advertise uh, the Bluetooth adapter name as the GAT server locals name uh, but uh, as a workaround we can save the current adapter name and uh, change it change the adapter name to our custom name for example my GAT <coughs> start advertising and uh, restore the original adapter name. It's a trick, but it works. Okay, let's launch this application in Android, in a device that supports uh, Bluetooth catch server. Let's go. Okay, in the other hand, we have another application that will act as a, as a client. It's a simple application, also with a Bluetooth LE component, a button that starts a discover process and that is filtering only for devices that are advertising the service 1800 and in the discovery device event what I'm going to do is uh, check okay we have uh, two ready buttons uh, one to choose the advertisement from the service data and another one to choose the advertisement from the manufacturer data then when we get a discovery device event uh, we are going to check what of, of the two radio buttons are selected and depends on what is selected I get the URL from the uh, data service or from the manufacturer specific data and then I will load this URL in a web browser component so the web page will uh, load in the application okay I will launch uh, this application on a Mac and also I will launch the application on an iOS device on an iPad and we will see how the three applications one server, one GAT server and two GAT clients uh, works well we have here the Android application that acts at uh, GAT server and here in my Mac I have the, the Mac application and here I'm getting the iPad screen okay let's see if I can see all the devices at the same time okay so uh, if we press scan in this application uh, this got client uh, will be uh, listening for advertisement for a device that uh, advertise the 
uh, 18 of our service only this advertises and uh, it will parse the information uh, from the service data for the service 1800 uh, and convert it to a URL this URL will be shown here and this URL will be loaded in the web browser component here the same for the iPad I will change here the radio button because I want that in the iPad uh, we load the second URL sorry here we are going to load the first URL that is uh, advertised uh, via the manufacturer data and here we are we are going to load the second URL that is advertised uh, through the service data okay I press scan here and I press scan in the iPad and now I press the advertise in the GAT server so it starts to advertise this information here we go here we go I press the advertise button and as you can see the application are receiving the URLs and they are loading the website one for C++ Builder and one for Delphi Seattle also if I if I change here the second URL the other one remember that this URL is uh, advertise it in the service data if I uh, press again the advertise button the advertise data will change we uh, begin a new uh, advertisement and this application that is uh, waiting for advertisements of service data will change its, its URL so Let's see. Let's advertise again. And you can see that the web page are changed because the URL that it receives is different. Okay, I think that this is a, a good way, an interesting way of use the advertised data to advertise a lot, a lot of information with a, a very very little space let's see now uh, how Radar Studio Seattle allows us to turn our devices into beacon in a very very easy manner a beacon device is uh, just a bluetooth low energy device acting as peripheral that just advertises specific data that identifies it and hits RSSI to allow scanning devices to calculate the distance to it. In Red Studio X8, we introduced the beacon component, enabling uh, applications to scan and monitor beacons information and calculate the distance to these devices. Now, for Seattle, we have developed a new component, the beacon device that allow us to turn our devices into beacons that advertises custom proximity data ok let's see how the beacon device works in our last demo ok I have here an application with a beacon component uh, that is enabled and I'm going to respond to the beacon enter, beacon exit and beacon proximity events just uh, writing a line in a memo this application will act as, uh, as a beacon client it will detect the beacons over here uh, the beacons that we uh, introduce here in the monitor directions so let's to create 
another application that uh, will allow us to create a beacon this is uh, to turn our device into a beacon device ok, we will use the new beacon device component put here in the form and uh, to miss the the beacon UUID for example before before ok whatever you want we have to put our UUID and we can put also the minor and the major region for example 100 and 10 ok uh, by default the beacon type is a standard we can create two types of beacons the standard and the alternative the alt beacon uh, this is restricted because in iOS and Mac we only can create a standard beacon that is the iBeacon format uh, but in Android we can also create alt beacons ok, we are going to create a standard beacon and to get this working just put a button here and when I press the button I set the beacon neighbor to true ok, I will put another button to set the beacon off ok, this will be on this will be off there we set the enable property of the beacon device to false to stop the beacon advertise ok and we will use the same UUID here that in the beacon client application we set here in iterated regions this UUID ok setting major and minor to these values, the file values uh, will uh, scan for all the beacons with this UUID uh, even what uh, major and minor values it has ok let's see how this works ok, I will launch this project the, the beacon client in uh, your device and the other project where I have put a beacon device component and the other project where I have put a beacon device component I will launch in my Android device uh, remember that you have to set the Bluetooth permissions for this works and mm, this works also in iOS and Mac uh, you can create you can use the beacon device component also in MacOS and iOS. Let's run it.
here is the client application with the memo and in the other device we are running the application with the beacon device component here it is okay then when I press the on button the client application uh, detects the beacon and launch the beacon enter event and if I move the phone uh, I, I get uh, proximity events okay now the phone is near now the phone is very close and also if I press the off button the beacon will turn off and the proximity away uh, has has been launched okay that's all it's very easy to turn our devices into beacons with the new beacon component for Red Studio I think that that's all for today and thank you for joining this co-write session and now it's time to, for questions goodbye okay well it's just gonna be me I'll see what I can do here to help answer your beacon related questions so uh, Kristen's asking how to connect to a device without discovery classic Bluetooth when I already know the device's MAC address. In my opinion, or as far as I know, that's not possible. That's a limitation of the OS. You um, conceivably on Android could override the OS's discovery and pairing process, but classic Bluetooth only works in paired mode. That's just the way it works, and the OS is only going to let you talk to paired devices. Because Android's open, it's conceivable you could modify the Android OS in order to allow you to do that. So uh, there's a question here about where to download the demos. I'll go ahead and I'll see what I can do to find the demos and get them make sure they're available to download on the uh, Code Rage page here. Let me give you the link to the Code Rage update page we have going on here. So there's the page you can we'll get those up available for you. How do you activate the Bluetooth again? I'm not sure what you mean on that, Marco. If you could uh, expand on your question there, I'll see what I can do to help answer that one. Uh, what is the max range for beacons? So it actually varies from beacon to beacon. Most beacons are configurable for uh, range. And what that does is you can turn up the power to the antenna and that will improve the range but reduce the battery life. Now there are some beacons that are not uh, battery powered and so those you can use more power and get more range out of so the maximum range here on a beacon it's saying is about uh, 70 meters or 230 feet but again that can vary from beacon to beacon and depending on how you're setting the the, the uh, power to uh, how much power you're putting into the transmission is there a blog that covers everything that was mentioned that's a really good question I will follow up with Jose and see if I can get him to uh, hear it um, Diego to create a blog post around this because that would be really useful to have. With the device beacon component, can I send some data information from my Android devices? So I believe with the beacon component, it's only going to uh, advertise as a beacon. It's not going to send additional data. If you want to send additional data, you'd want to use uh, like Bluetooth, the Bluetooth components or uh, app tethering. Can an Arduino board be a beacon? I believe they can. I believe they can. You'd have to look at the Arduino documentation. I know the Arduino boards can receive or talk to beacons. They do have Bluetooth, or you can get a Bluetooth module for the Arduino boards. So I believe that Bluetooth module can go into uh, <coughs> peripheral mode where it can act as a beacon. Oh, so Diego saying, you, or uh, Marco said that you need, said you needed to activate Bluetooth or something like that in project options. 
there is a permission you have to set on Android to say that you are uh, able to access the Bluetooth antenna. And so that's through the app permissions. That's possibly what I'm thinking what he may have been referring to. So Roland saying, I can get about 30 meters in-house with a Bluetooth LE beacon with he tried. Yeah, so the range, like I said, is going to vary from beacon to beacon and depending on how the beacon's configured for how much energy it's going to put into transmitting. And apparently Arduino can be a beacon. Pretty sure it could. So glad someone used Google and found that. Where can I buy beacon devices? There's a number of places you can buy beacon devices. This is, I'll put a link here for uh, EM micro beacons, which is one we've used and found really uh, useful. And I believe you can buy them through our site. If not, you can buy it through resellers. Let's see. Nope, they don't have sale or beacons for sale there. Let's see. Estimote. Ah, Estimote has it. So and I have these Estimote beacons as well, and they seem to work pretty good. Uh, I heard about XY Beacons. They have their own app, but can I program it too? I'm not sure on XY Beacons. You have to talk. Each beacon is going to be a little different. They've all got slightly different implementations, different features. So uh, some beacons transmit additional information besides just the uh, advertisements. So, for example, uh, he mentioned the micro beacons have information or whether the beacon's moving, for example. So you can get information, additional information from the beacon. So each beacon manufacturer is going to have slightly different implementation of their beacon. So if you take a look at the beacon manufacturer site, see what you can find out from them as far as what their beacon supports, then you can combine that with the stuff that you just learned here from Jose as far as how to uh, talk to those beacons. All right, I think that's it for our beacon-related questions. There, We actually have another session coming up later, deep dive on beacon fence beacon app solution development. And if you do have more beacon related questions there, I'll see what I can do to make sure we get someone from R&D on to help answer the questions on that one. And they can probably uh, help field questions if you didn't feel like you got a good enough answer for right now. So thanks for joining us and we'll see you all in just a couple minutes with our next session.